Father in heaven, oh, it is such a comfort and such a blessing to be able to come to you, even in the midst of things feeling chaotic and the world is changing. You never change. Our confidence and our hope is in you, Lord, and we're grateful for that. So as we have these discussions about how we as uh, church members and church leaders can continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus online. We invite your Holy Spirit to be our teacher, to inspire us so that we can go forth and share the gospel. We pray that everything will go smoothly, that those who signed up will be able to join and that everything will bring honor and glory to your name. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Okay, so once again, welcome. Um, thank you so much for tuning into the webinar being hosted by the Center for Online Evangelism in conjunction with the North American Division Social Media and Big Data Department. If you are new to Zoom, um, this one is pretty straightforward, but we do want you to interact with us in terms of asking questions. So please, there is a Q&A box. You can type your questions in there. And if we have time, we will, the aim is to get to all of the questions. We'll answer it live. If not, we have someone who will be sort of answering your questions uh, in the box as well. And you can also communicate to us through our Facebook page. Um, so for now, I want to let you know a little bit about who we are. I'm Felicia Battis, the Special Projects Manager at the Center for Online Evangelism. And I'm joined by Jamie Dom. Jamie, tell them a little bit about you and what you do. So I am the digital strategist for the North American division, specifically the social media and big data department. So a big part of my job is creating resources for churches and ministries to equip them and empower them to embrace digital technologies for our mission and our message. So this has never been more relevant than now. Exactly. And the Center for Online Evangelism, we love working with other entities especially uh, Jamie's department, because this is so needed. And Jamie is going to talk a little bit more about why digital evangelism is so important. Um, yeah, so Jamie, take it away. Why are we having this webinar today? Well, if you are on planet Earth, you have heard of COVID-19. And like many of us across the United States and many other countries, because I know that we have an international audience, your church service has been canceled until further notice. Um, you know, some, some people say it's been two weeks, some people say a month, but honestly, we don't know. And this is a way that we can extend that church experience. And honestly, God's kingdom is 24 seven. And so our church should go beyond those four walls anyway. So I am hoping and praying that good health for everyone, but I'm hoping that this serves as a catalyst for the church and its members to embrace technologies, to enhance our experience beyond the four world walls of a church. Yes. Exactly. And the thing is, we want to, when all of this is done, we want our churches to be stronger and to be more unified because we tend to get into this idea that church is just the building, but the building is closed, but the church goes on, Jamie. And that's where digital evangelism plays such a huge role um, because despite the buildings being closed, because we are online, we can still spread the gospel. And going digital is much more than live streaming your service. And that's what we're going to be talking a bit more um, today. Jamie, you were sharing about Acts chapter one. Can you talk a little bit more about what's driving um, the gospel today compared to Acts chapter one? So the interesting thing about um, what happens in Acts chapter one, and I cannot take credit for this point. It was actually somebody on our Instagram profile that pointed this out to me. So the gospel went global in its day because Christians out of necessity had to flee persecution and they took their faith and they took these teachings to whatever countries and regions they fled to. So again, we are going into the digital mission field. I know some of us have been advocating for this for a while, but right now we're going into the digital mission field out of necessity. And sometimes this necessity creates growth. And, and I think this is where we can embrace digital technologies to better serve our community um, in the long run. In the short term, we can also serve our community, we can serve our members, we can actually create unification. But at, at the end of the day, when this pandemic ends, we will have grown and we will have expanded our means of ministering. And that to me is very powerful. And we will have expanded ourselves into the digital mission field. 
it comes out of necessity, but sometimes God pushes us and he uses exactly. circumstances to motivate us for change. And that's what we see happening. Um, and we want you all to know, of course, you can post your questions in the Q&A box. And after this presentation, we'll be able to get there. And it's the main point that an online church community is vital if we want to remain strong while the world is fighting uh, COVID-19. Another reminder, the resources that we mentioned, because we're going to touch on points as in how practically you can strengthen your online presence as a church, whether you're a pastor, a communication leader, your position in the church, or if you have a ministry, or if you want to be a digital missionary. We're going to be touching these points, but we're going to make all of the resources available so you can go through them at your own pace and know exactly how to do it. So digital evangelism, what is it and why is it important? Very simply, it is sharing the gospel, but using these internet tools, our cell phones, our laptops, whatever it is that we have on our hands to share the gospel. And why is it important? Half of the world's population has access uh, to the internet. There are about 7 billion people on the earth. Half of them have access to the internet. So if we as a church, if we're going to fulfill our mission, which is to take the gospel to the ends of the world, every tribe, every nation, it's going to be online. That's why digital evangelism uh, is so important. Jamie, how about social media presence? Why, what role does that play in keeping our church members connected? Well, I think, you know, we talk about, um, so how it can keep us connected is we're online and now we have more time and people spend their lives online already. But if people are, you know, we're social distancing and we have all this extra time. And so if we're going online, we can use it to share words of encouragement. We can share about our life. We can reach out to others. We can, one of the things we talk about um, at Digital Evangelism Strategies is this idea of really listening to your community and responding to their needs because people post a surprising amount of information online. And if you're just listening to your friends, to your community, you can find ways of ministering to their needs. And the, the thing is, we are present. And right now, people are afraid. They're looking for hope. We have a message of hope and wholeness. And there is a way for us to share and comfort each other, even if we're far apart. And it's never been easier to share our message and to share hope than it is today. Absolutely. So what we're going to do now is to jump into just a few practical things that you can begin doing as soon as today to start building your online church or extending your church online. Uh, so the very first thing that we want to talk about is live streaming. So over the weekend, both Jamie and I, we just got almost inundated with a whole bunch of questions in regards to um, live streaming. How do I go live? What do I do? And uh, sometimes persons might think we need a whole lot of equipment and software. Yes, there is that very complicated, for lack of a better word, complicated way of doing live streaming, but there are simple ways that you can uh, stream your church services or maybe your pastor who is in his living room and he wants to preach to his audience. And a very simple way is by going on your church's Facebook page. So by now, um, your church should have a, a social media page. Um, of course, we can talk about whether your specific church might need one, but it is good in this day and age, as Jamie was just mentioning, to have a social media presence. So your church should have a Facebook page, and there is that option at the top where you go into um, have a status where you can go live just using your cell phone. If that is all you have, use your cell phone, um, rotate it so it's a uh, horizontal view rather than a vertical to avoid those um, thick side bars um, at the end as Jamie is showing because we see that mistake a lot where people just have their phones like this in the vertical view rather than um, horizontal and that's the most basic way that your church can begin um, live streaming. There is also Instagram live and I saw a post about this where um, this lady was on Instagram and she just sent out a message that she was having this church community on Instagram, went live, and persons were able, I think up to thousands of persons were able to watch. So that's another option. 
then there are churches that are set up with software and other gear for them to be streaming through their church website. You can do that. And then I should also include, if your church has a YouTube channel, I'm going to mention that a bit later, you can also stream live uh, via your YouTube channel. The other important point that we want to talk about when it comes to live streaming, don't feel as if, if your church, for instance, has 50 people or 40 people and you don't have the technology or no one knows how to do it, it is okay to still go on your church Facebook page and uh, stream um, the church service or program from another site. For example, Amazing Facts or any of these other churches that has a live stream, you can just share their content. So don't feel as if you absolutely have to do it, all right? Uh, the other option that you have when you want to build or strengthen your church's online community is to start a blog. Churches within the North American division should have a website that's provided by the NAD. Your pastor can begin writing short devotional thoughts and posting that on your page. Topics that people find relevant. Um, as we mentioned earlier, a lot of people are feeling afraid. There's a lot of anxiety. People are searching online. They want to watch videos, but they're also reading blogs. Um, so start writing blogs, getting members of your church as well. If someone enjoys writing, have them uh, submit content and then start posting that on your page. So you're producing more content uh, on your church on your church website, or you can even use Facebook notes, uh, for example. Podcasts is another option that churches have. And so again, we're moving away from this idea that the only option that you have as a church or as a digital mi missionary or as a ministry is just to live stream. You can start a podcast. Some people just want to listen instead of watching. Um, and I'm, I'm going to mention again, we do have resources to show you exactly how um, to go about starting a podcast. And I see the hands uh, being raised and we're going to get to um, the questions. So I just want to pick up one right now from Abel, wondering what tools would make sense to use for an online interactive Sabbath school. That's a great question. I'm going to talk about that um, in just a moment. So Amy answered it. Um, but I'm going to talk about that. So thanks for that question. Um, your YouTube channel. This, it's very simple and easy to set up. Um, YouTube has a lot of content that might not, that doesn't feed us spiritually. So if we as a church would use this opportunity now that church members are home, young people are at home, we're not having services in the building, start creating more videos, um, and building up your channel to produce content that would empower and encourage people. And, and if you don't mind, I, I'd like to kind of jump in and say part of this, when you're producing content, it's not just the responsibility of a pastor or just a few people. You can create a team. You can even have member generated content. Like I'm always impressed with the content that members of my church come up and share from their daily lives. And you can curate that and post it either to your website, to your social media. It doesn't have to be the responsibility of one person. We are all called to be disciples and we are all called to minister to others. Yeah, I love that point. And it, the other thing that we need to think about, especially when it comes to starting a YouTube channel, for example, since a lot of people are home, your young people, your kids are at home away from school. Yes, you still want them studying, but this might, I want to be careful in saying using kids for YouTube, but um, maybe starting a vlog about how you personally are going through this contain, this, um, these efforts to have small groups um, out in the public, not gathering so much. What are you doing at home? How are you keeping your family strong? How are you personally building your faith, your faith up? And then you can record that and then start sharing that to YouTube to encourage other people. Start online small groups. This is, and in a moment, Jamie is going to talk more about um, digital door knocking and prayer opportunities. But online small groups is another great way that you can keep your church members connected. Like the way that we're connecting now, we're doing a webinar, but outside of the webinar option, you can just go on zoom.us and sign up for a very a, a free 
account you will be given when you want to start a Zoom meeting. Um, you can, you have that nine digit number. You can send that out to your church members via on your, your Facebook page or maybe through email or Instagram, send out that number and persons can join you on Zoom for an online Bible study. So that's a way to keep all of your church members connected. If you want to have Sabbath school, um, as someone was mentioning, this is another great way to still have the lesson, to present, to get people talking. They can still see each other, still having that idea. Well, not idea, but the reality that even though the church building is closed, we're still connected. Sisters, as well, if there is that hesitance to go from home to home to home to visit members, especially now where we're being asked to be very careful to protect the most vulnerable of our society, which is those who are 65 and plus. So you might not be able to visit them in person, but maybe there's a uh, Skype where their children can connect you with Skype and you can offer counseling services for other church members. Since kids are home from school, um, tutoring is another way that you can be um, a digital missionary, um, training these kids and so forth. So all of these are options that you have to keep your church members connected. Jamie, do you want to mention anything else about online small groups and guidelines? Because I know yeah. you have a great resource about that. So Amy Register and I actually put together a set of guidelines for online groups, which is really helpful for creating a safe community that really encourages positive engagement. I'll send that link into the webinar chat. I also wanted to say the feature that uh, Felicia and I are currently using is webinars. So you can only see two of us speaking, but if you use Zoom regularly, you can have up to 30 people who can talk. And so it's actually really great and interactive for Bible study for you know, any kind of chat groups or, or anything like that where you can actually really engage. So, and then of course you have the chat box and you can send each other links and, and stuff like that as well. So small groups can be a really positive way to stay connected, um, to include everyone. You can even do like children's stories. I've seen people where they still record the children's story and post yeah. that on their yeah, or they do like a little children's program. You can do that via Zoom or any of the other, you know, apps that we have. And even going Facebook Live. If you're a person who usually does the children's story, you can go live. You can share it. You're probably connected to your other church members. They can share it and everybody can tune in and watch the, the story with their child. Yes, absolutely. Um, Thomas, we see your question. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, but I wanted to mention, because just, just Jean Pierre, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, he makes a very valid point in saying many older members don't use social media or the internet. So is there a way or is there a resource to help stream audio to a phone hotline? Yes, you can actually, um, there are audio conference, there are conference call software out there where someone can call and then you can share like the number with your, um, with your church audience, especially the older ones, and all of them can be on the same phone call. The other option is WhatsApp. For example, my parents might not be able to come on social media or online, but they are very WhatsApp literate. So even connecting with people through WhatsApp and sharing these audio, um, recording maybe the Sabbath school lesson through audio or video, sharing that, and several members can actually come together on a, on a WhatsApp call. So I want to very quickly, before I move on to the next point, take Tom's question. It says, we have a total shutdown of all churches in Austria. Our church has a weekly live stream. I do not want to just live stream a church service for the next week, next Sabbath. I would like to stream a Bible study with the possibility of interacting with church members. How is this possible? Um, so we just mentioned it, for example, with Zoom, you can get your church members. There is a free option. There are other options to upgrade. Um, that's more on the pricey side, but there is a basic um, Zoom option where you can send those nine digits to your church members and have all of them see each other on video and be able to talk with each other. You can have the Sabbath school lesson and you don't just have to meet. Remember, Digital evangelism allows you not just to meet once a week on Sabbath, but throughout the week um, and to keep interacting with people. So thank you so much for that, um, that question. 
And I think you, you make an excellent point that you can actually meet daily because there are different personality types. And obviously this is not the forum to talk about the difference between introverts and extroverts. An introvert like me, I'm okay being in my house. I'm okay with um, not seeing people on a regular basis, but for a lot of people, it's extremely important for their mental health to interact with people on a daily basis. And so by using these digital technologies, you can actually um, minister to their mental health and their sense of community by having nightly prayers or just nightly right. social gatherings. Or I've seen um, where, and this is a very worldly concept, but somebody was like, oh, let's do happy hour via like Zoom or whatever. We don't want to do that as a church, no. but we can take that idea and we can say, well, why don't we have a mom's meet up? So in a couple of weeks, you know, I have a play date with some friends with my daughter and I, and we're actually still going to do the play date because at this point it's really for the moms, not the babies. They don't really know each other. <laughs> um, we're still going to do it because for our mental well-being, that connection with other human beings, it's so important. And so we can continue to minister to each other, particularly those people who need that social interaction on a daily basis. Absolutely. Remember, be creative. As Jamie is saying, we can be creative with these um, these online small groups. So yes, ha still have Sabbath school, still stream your um, your sermons, for instance, but maybe on Sunday evening, um, I once started a, a, an online small group and for five months, it was, we were talking about relationships, reading a book, praying together, asking questions, growing our relationship with God, and at the same time, discussing godly principles uh, to build a relationship. So that's something that the young people in the church can do. So they're still maintaining the youth department. Um, for health department, for example, maybe there is someone who does re who cooks really, really good, and they want to share a nice vegan recipe. While you're in your kitchen as the maybe health ministry leader, go on Facebook Live on your church's uh, Facebook page or Instagram account, start live streaming. And that way you can start a conversation about uh, health and diet or what to do in these times when there's, well, there's food shortage, but how to be creative in a moment where persons might not be able to go to the store. So there are so many opportunities that we have as a church um, to be sharing content online. Uh, and I just thought of something actually, you know, the app next door where you can actually connect with your local community. You could start like we've already texted all of our neighbors and stuff like that, where people are posting to next door and offering to help others or elderly who need to go grocery shopping or anybody who needs anything. Or if you run out of some kind of food item, they can drop it off on your porch and not actually interact with you. There's a lot that we can do not only with our church community, but with our local like physical community as well, while maintaining social distancing absolutely and in a moment i'm going to come back to you jamie so you can talk about prayer opportunities online um something else that we can keep in mind as church leaders and the programs that you are creating online when you go on facebook um create fate you can create facebook ads and target the people in your local area so let's say you are having a an online, let's say Sabbath school, but you're having this online meeting and you create that post, you share it on your, on your page, but then you create an ad and you target the people who are in your area, in your neighborhood. Because think about it, there are many who live next door to us who are far away from their family and friends who can't see them. So just to have that idea that they can still connect with people in their community online and you can let them know about what your church is doing or what you individually are doing by creating those Facebook ads. And we do have resources to walk you through how to create an ad. Um, Jamie, talk about prayer opportunities that we can offer online as church. Yes, I think this is something that I'm personally really excited about. And I've even started doing it with my you know, personal social media where either as an individual or as the church, um, you know, corporately, you can start posting and asking, you know, who needs prayer? You can go live and pray in front of people. I right. mean, there, there's something very powerful about hearing someone pray on your behalf. You'll be amazed if you ask people, whoever needs prayer today, let me know. They'll direct message you or if they just like your post. I mean, prayer is so easy because it's just a life away 
that you can then use this as an opportunity to minister to them and to follow up and find out what people's really true needs are. It's, it's amazing how vulnerable people will be um, with the sort of that the protective wall of a screen or even the sense of anonymity with a screen because they don't have to tell you face to face, you know, what they're struggling with. And you can actually, one of the things I've done recently is when I, I follow my friends and stuff on Facebook and my other social media outlets. And when I see those cries for help, I actually have started sending recorded prayers where mm. you know, if they're in the middle of a crisis and one in four people at any given time is in crisis, um, and I can only imagine what the numbers are right now with so much fear, is you can send them an audio recording of your prayer. They might not want to talk. They might not be able to talk to you. But they can hear you pray for them. And there's something about prayer that even the skeptical they want to be loved so much that you would petition god for them and, and so it's that it's not just a one-time affair make sure you keep track make sure you follow up with people because not only will you be loving them and reflecting the love of christ onto them and praying to god on their behalf but it also strengthens your faith because while you might not hear from all of them you'll hear from some of them and you can see how god is working in their lives as far as churches and their prayer groups, like our church obviously has a prayer committee, you can um, create a WhatsApp group or a Slack group or, or even a, like a Facebook group where, you know, prayers are added and you guys get together and you, you pray either separately or, you know, together on like a video call. So there's a way to kind of stay in touch and to a way to be constantly petitioning for prayer. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. And that's what's going to get us through this time, prayer. We can use hand sanitizer. We can wash our hands. Yes, yeah. absolutely ought to do that. But it's really going to be prayer that keeps us absolutely covered while we fight. COVID-19. <laughs> uh, so the next thing that we want to uh, mention, in terms of social media, Jamie, I know you've had your own fair share of just being overwhelmed by what's on social media. Yes. So I want to spend some time just sitting here um folks there is enough negative content on social media right now this is the time for us as god's people to start drowning out the fear and the negativity by spreading more hope and faith and comfort um we do that by sharing uplifting content videos and songs mm -hmm. sermons um things like that you share more of that not saying that we want to avoid sharing news and vital information that is good but a lot of people are scrolling on their page and they just want to see something that's going to give them hope we have a hope that a lot of people don't have and this is an opportune moment for us to share that pastors you can use this opportunity to go live your church members want to see you this excuse that a lot of us might have well i'm not a facebook person and i'm saying this respectfully I'm not a Facebook person. I don't have a face for the camera and so forth. This is a time when your members want to see you. They want to hear from you as their leader. Um, and it is, yeah, it is okay to go on social media to show yourself and to provide that message of encouragement. Even if you don't do it live, um, just a note, uh, a blog post, something like that. Share photos and videos. How are you and your family celebrating Sabbath? while you are at home um so encourage your members to do that as well and um disrespectful mean comments because this has been jamie i want you to take this away all right so this is um you know a moment of vulnerability to me and i actually have a pretty tough skin as many of you may know i actually worked in the secular world for over 10 years part of that was for the government so i've seen the good the bad and the really ugly but over this weekend i am i am an admin on probably over 50 uh christian pages and I was astounded at the aggression and the amount of negativity being directed at Christians. It's like we're being blamed for this. And, and something that really struck me, because, you know, as foretold in the Bible, is more than once was this comment that came through is, where is your God now? Yeah. And, and to me, that was scary that, you know, we always talk about Jesus is coming soon to prepare for the time of tribulation, but without even knowing it, you know, they are mocking us. They are fulfilling Bible prophecy. They are mocking us. They are, they are, 
defying God. And, and the comments were, were brutal. They were really bad. And so I actually had to even step back and um, because it was actually getting and pulling me down because how do I, I can't witness to them because they're definitely not open to it, but we have to not feed into that because sometimes what happens is somebody posts something that's incredibly disrespectful, that's right. intact for faith, that's um, hurtful, that's mocking. And, and we want to defend our savior. We want to mm -hmm. defend our faith. And sometimes we make it worse um, because right. the, the thing that we must always remember, every post, everything we share online, we must comment everything with the salvation of others in mind because yeah. god does love them and so we don't want to escalate the situation so there are definitely ways to kind of check your attitude online to check your social media and we have resources on that too basically um and i'll post that also in the chat feed this one article we are all publishers now and just you know, post on social media audit um you know help by posting content that is helpful if someone is afraid or if someone is freaked out because they may be sharing or come in contact with some misinformation, try to, in love, kind of correct that information, reassure them, let them know that you were here, but don't escalate if, if someone is attacking. And the other thing is, um, you know, as a digital missionary, as a digital disciple or evangelist, whatever category you fall into, however you're using um, these technologies, you also want to guard the edges of your day and guard your own spirituality. There are times you have to step back and you have to protect yourself because it's very easy to take things personally and it's very easy to be hurt by the things that people are saying. And right now, people are panicked right. and they are looking for someone to blame, whether it's, you know, racism, whether it's just anti-faith, you know, like whatever it is, just make sure you also protect yourself because you don't want to get stuck down in the mud with them. Absolutely. Fear causes us to lash out and to, to hurt people. And so I love how you talked about, we sometimes feel that need. A lot of times we feel that need to want to defend Christ. But when we look at the story of what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, when they came to arrest Jesus, Peter, like most of us, we want to defend Jesus. We want to protect Jesus on Facebook. And Peter thought the best way to do that was to pull out a sword. And our tongue is, can be just as sharp as a sword. He pulled out a sword and he ended up almost taking off Malchus's, Malchus's head. You know, he got the air. But Jesus came, came and, and healed that. And a lot of times that is what we end up doing. We end up hurting and harming, causing a lot of harm to someone else's soul because of that effort to uh, defend Jesus. But we, we, we become very mean and demeaning and disrespectful in our comments on social media. So during this time of fear, let us be careful about how we are responding to people, how we are taught, even if you disagree with someone, be careful of the words that you are sharing. Another thing that we can do, and we're going to talk a little bit more on, I'm, pop, pop, I'm going to show an example of how you can go live on your, um, your church's Facebook page, because it seems as if a lot of people are asking questions about that. We're not going to get very technical. We want to cover just the, the basics. So I'm going to do a quick demo of that. Um, but something else that you can do as a church or just as a church member shareable graphics. You can go on a website like canva.com, which is totally free, um, and put a picture, put a quote, um, put a scripture, um, an, a scripture from the spirit of prophecy or from other religious books that would encourage faith, that will um, point people closer to Jesus Christ, give them hope, um, give them encouragement, remind them that we are protected by Christ. Of course, you don't want to be presumptuous, but people just want that sense of hope. So just creating graphics and sharing that will be something that's very helpful. One thing that I do, maybe it's not Canva that you want to use, but the YouVersion app, it's a Bible app that's it's very free. You can create scriptures through that and share um, that on social media as well. Right before um, digital door knocking, we're just going to do a really quick demo to show how easy it is um, to start a Facebook um, live. So just give me a moment. Mm -hmm. 
Well, why you do that, I, I kind of want to openly answer one of these questions from Peter on the Q&A. He asked, how do we encourage our members to connect with us um, and deal with the danger of losing our members to the distractions while taking advantage of the opportunity it presents? And an interesting idea about that is, you know, we talk about all the dangers about going online, and but we, we don't have any issues with the dangers of going into the physical mission field. And so what I think is really interesting, it's, this is a quote by Eleanor Roosevelt, which is, it's better to light a flame than a light a candle than to curse the darkness. And um, yes, there will be distractions, but that's where we want to keep people focused. We want to create content because here's the thing, they're going to go online anyway. And if we're not creating good content that feeds their soul, they're going to interact with the other stuff. And that's where we have to step into the mission field, just like we would the physical mission field and have its dangers and it has and have its temptations. We need to step into the digital mission field and to provide the content, put, you know, fill it with good things and good fruit so that people actually have the option versus there being a spiritual void online. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jamie. Um, so very quickly, I'm just going to share. So your page, this is our Center for Online Evangelism page, but your church page would probably look similar to this. And it is really, you don't have to download an app. You don't need, um, it might probably look different if you're on your phone. Sorry, I should mention that. If you're on your phone, um, you can, the Facebook page manager, you would go there and it might probably look different if you have an iPhone or an Android. But as soon as you go onto your church's page, right at the top, you should see the live button or on your phone, it will look a bit different, but you can just, I think it's under um, some of the options there and you can just click on go live. Hopefully I don't accidentally go live here. Um, so it's going to be different on my laptop. But on your phone, you can click the go live and you're literally just there. So that was just a short demo for those who thought that it might be really, really difficult um, to start. So just going back to the presentation, give me a minute to pull that back up. So as we were talking about, you can share um, graphics um, just to help encourage people online rather than contributing to a lot of the fear. Um, Jamie, what is digital door knocking and how can we serve the community more? Okay, well digital door knocking is this idea of sharing our faith online. So when we think of Cole Porters, we don't necessarily expect them to have written the books that they're offering people or they're or compose the resources themselves that they're offering people. Like we don't see Clifford Goldstein going around, you know, knocking on doors. Um, so digital door knocking is sort of the same idea where you have all these resources at your disposal of the church, other ministries, whatever, and you share them online through your sphere of digital influence. And then that way people can interact with it if they choose to. They can interact at, at what time you know, is convenient for them. So the great thing about digital door knocking is a lot of people who are searching like to search in anonymity and, and they can do it within the privacy of their home. And so you're filling your feed with good content that may pique their interest, that may minister to their needs, that may answer their questions. Um, and so really uh, in the simplest form, that is what digital door knocking is. And so I, another thing, you know, with digital door knocking, it's also serving the community. So paying attention, going back to this idea of paying attention to what others are posting online, especially in your the, the closer part of your community and people who are within reach of you, because you can use that information to serve them. Now, normally I would talk about, you know, if somebody's a young person's posting that they need help moving, you know, this Sunday, then you could say, I'll, I'll help you. And that's a very direct and easy way to minister their needs based on what they're expressing. And then you could build a relationship based on that. Now, now um, those needs might be different. Like some people might be going stir crazy in their home. They might be lonely. They might be frightened. They may not understand something. So if you have medical staff in your, in your church and someone has a lot of questions and they're expressing those questions online, you could always connect them 
with um, a medical professional that is happy to answer their questions. You could just simply reach out to the lonely um, mm -hmm. who are loneliness and isolation. And um, one of the things I saw actually this weekend that I thought was really cool, a friend of mine was actually offering to babysit for parents who have to work, who mm -hmm. for medical professionals who have to go into work. And so, you know, because they're seeing online everybody going, what am I going to do with my kids? The school's closing, the daycare's closing, and I still have to go to work. And right. it, it's a way of offering to help them. Another right. thing to do is just you know, paying attention. They might be posting cries for help. Mm -hmm. they very real felt needs. A lot of people are very worried about money. They're very worried about all kinds of different things. Um, you can use tech apps like the Cash App and PayPal to help those who are financially hurting. You mm -hmm. can buy online gift cards. You can buy Amazon gift cards and email them to people who so they can get supplies. Um, you can help people who need medical supplies, diabetics, you know, you know, and whatever they may need. Um, another idea to tie in is you could, you know, look and see what people. Day, what their felt needs are and you can make five calls or texts or whatever is a day to check on members of your church and you can share supplies so you know I was just chatting earlier with a friend of mine who doesn't have a lot of toilet paper and you know I never thought I would say this on a webinar but if you have an extra store of toilet paper you can share that with people in need you can um, encourage others. You can cook meals for people. You can, um, you know, create an online village to help each other out. Yeah, absolutely. Those are just some ideas. <laughs> no, really. Um, and, and that's the thing. Online, online evangelism gives us countless opportunities to reach out and to share um, the gospel, meeting the needs of people. I appreciate that so much, uh, Jamie. The other important thing um, for our churches is our church website. Every time I do a presentation, Jamie, I'm sure you can relate, but one of the things that really hurts my heart is when I go on the website that our churches have and to see maybe an event that is being promoted that was held like four years ago, or um, there is no updated information. There is nothing on your church page this is a great opportunity for us to go and to update our church website and i know that you might be thinking i don't know about website design i don't know what to do i don't know how to start so there are two things that you can do number one it could be as simple as going to, on youtube and googling or or youtubing how to edit in wordpress or connecting the nad has a department um, Adventist Church Connect, where they're working with churches um, to help to give you access to your church website. It's very simple. I've never done a course on updating um, church websites, but it's something that's very simple that you can learn to do by either Googling, going on YouTube, connecting with people um, online who can teach you how to do it. But we also have Adventist uh, digital marketing companies that can help manage your church website. Um, so whether you can connect to the Center for Online Evangelism, um, or we have Compose Marketing, or it is Advent Digital Marketing, or the NAD, there is somebody who can help you update your church website. Now that people are more online, they're at home, they're searching for answers, um, in regards to faith, in regards to Jesus Christ, when they hear about Sam Day Adventist, or for example, when they hear about Ellen White, one thing that they're going to do is that they're going to Google our churches. And if our websites are not up to par, if the online content that's online about Sam Day Adventist do not match up with the story that we are telling them, we are losing a lot of people. So pastors, for pastors who are listening out there, please assign someone to update your church website because your Facebook page might be up to date, but your Facebook page should lead to your church website and that has to look good. Jamie, do you want to say anything about this? Yes, I and mean, I actually just posted some links in there also about how to improve your digital curb appeal, so to speak, right. um, with regards to your website. Here's the thing, you can use Avis Church Connect, um, but you can also use other resources like Wix and Squarespace and WordPress, and some of them are honestly a little bit more user-friendly. 
Yeah. And they always have the latest technologies. And honestly, if you have somebody who's young and kind of tech savvy, you don't right. need a lot of design skills. There's templates that you can use and a lot of it's drag and drop. So if you can use Microsoft, right. you can build a website nowadays. And a lot of those platforms host for just a hundred dollars or so a year. And you might be able to find somebody in your congregation. Like for my congregation, I actually pay for our website hosting because I built both of our websites on Wix. It's very easy. Then you can train others to actually go in and update it. It's very, very easy to use. If you have a young person who just wants to try their hand at web design or, or web updating, and using those templates, it, it's really a great opportunity to show young people and the tech savvy that you value their talents and, and that they're needed and to allow a young person to also help develop a skill set of theirs. Yeah. And as she mentioned, we do have resources on both our sites, sdabeta.org as well as Center for Online Evangelism uh, .org on what you can do, practical things that you can do to um, to change your church website into a digital fishing net so that you can, you're meeting the relevant, the needs of people so that the content that you're producing is relevant and that your church website looks um, updated. It doesn't look like something that was stuck in the 1800s. For example, even though the internet was not around during that time, but we are yeah. very serious when it comes to evangelism. You know, just talked about how sometimes the children of darkness are way more Faithful. Faithful wasn't the word that I used, I think. Uh, all certain things and children of the light. And we have to learn how to, when we're presenting the gospel, everything that we do, any platform that we're using um, is, is presenting the gospel in a good light. Um, mm -hmm. Our church website. So, of course, we are here to help you with that as well. And one of the things you can do is if you don't have a team that can constantly update the website, mm -hmm. go evergreen. So if you, yeah. and that's where you write content to have a very long shelf life. So everything for like my personal church's website, it's all evergreen language, except when we have special events. And then I create a page specific for that event. And the, the calendar is embedded from Google calendar. So they can see like when events are popping up. Mm -hmm. And so updates that calendar, it's embedded, automatically updates on the website. And then special things and information, that's all on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I think this is the final thing for this section that we're going to talk about. Use an email list. Um, so hopefully let's go first with the premise that your church had, was collecting the email addresses of church members before this whole outbreak. Um, but this is a great way to keep connected with your church members, to let them know of announcements, to keep them updated about what may be happening in the news, and to let them know about all of the other platforms that your church is going to be exploring in regards to strengthening your online presence. If you have not been collecting the email addresses of your members, that's definitely something that you should start doing when churches open up again. But for mm -hmm. now, it could be a simple message um, posting on Facebook and asking church members to tell their the ones that they're connected to, to email um, the church uh, so that they can get their email addresses. So this is a great way to stay in touch with people um, and to keep that engagement going. Yeah. Here, you could, oh, sorry, a lot of churches are very small, um, at least in the North American division. Most of our churches are under, I believe, 200. And so you could create a calling tree where you basically just call everyone and get their phone number, their email right. address, all that kind of stuff and create a master list where it's very easy to reach out and to contact people, especially, you know, as Adventists, um, you know, we're always looking for the second coming of Christ. And we know that's a time of tribulation is coming. We should just have all those contacts for emergency reasons as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, and even if there might be persons here, you're thinking we're not that high tech. We don't even have a Facebook page. I don't even have a laptop, whatever. This is not a time for any of us to make an excuse. If you have a cell phone and you have access to the internet, or even if you do not have access to the internet, you can dedicate an hour or let's say 30 minutes every day and say that I will start calling my church members to check up on them and let them know that the church is still here. The church is Christ. Um, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And COVID-19 for sure, absolutely will not prevail against us. So we're putting all excuses aside 
and we're finding ways to stay connected. And I actually, I just remembered something. We actually have um, an offer from Pastors Line, which is a texting site. So if you can collect everyone's um, cell phone numbers, that you can actually use it for free for 45 days. Um, and that's a great way to send out important information, important updates um, to, to, and also get feedback from people in a way that's meaningful and to engage with them. And that's actually on our landing page as well. For sure. So just a few points that we want everyone here to remember. Um, by the way, I should mention that this video is going to be made available on our pages, our Facebook page, the Digital Evangelism Strategies Facebook page. We can also make the, the slides. We have a ton of resources on both of our pages, so we will make sure that you all are covered, you have all of this information. If your pastor is not tuning into this webinar, or if there's someone you know who should be watching and getting to know more about digital evangelism, we're gonna make this available so they can have. So a few points that we want everyone to remember, we want our churches to come back stronger after we leave COVID-19. Yes, um, these events are going to get stronger. They're going to be more frequent. They're going to be of greater intensity as we draw closer to the coming of Jesus Christ. Just like a woman in labor, you feel mm -hmm. contractions, it goes away. Then the other wave comes. So this is one of those waves and they're going to keep on coming. So every time we go through crisis like this, our churches are not to be getting weaker. We need to be getting stronger. Um, so that is the encouragement. That's why digital evangelism is so important. We want everyone to remain connected. Connected just doesn't mean that everyone is in the same place physically, because you could have a huge group of people who are in very close proximity, but they are not unified. Jesus prayed in John 17, I pray that they may all be one as we, he and the Father are one. And digital evangelism is one of those ways that we can help church members remain connected and remain unified. This is a way that we can work together in sol solidarity to help the community around our churches. People want hope. They don't want to be afraid, um, but they don't know how to deal with their fear, and we can help with that. This is a great opportunity to evangelize to them. And digital evangelism and discipleship allows everybody in your church to get involved whether they're young, whether they're middle-aged, whether they're older, everyone, if they have a cell phone, if they have a laptop, everyone um, can get involved. The other thing, if we talked about anything that was too overwhelming, you would love to do this with, with your church, but you don't know where to start, how to start. There are ministries, there are um, digital marketing agencies that are available to help you. Um, and we're going to make all of those links and those ministries um, available to you. Um, and Jamie, <laughs> do you have anything else that you want to add? No, I mean, honestly, you guys, just keep asking us questions. I'm going to keep collecting resources. Felicia's going to keep collecting resources. This probably isn't going to be the last webinar we do. Right. So keep letting us know what your needs are, because in order for us to respond to your needs, we need to know what they are. So again, we're here listening ask your questions, direct message us, email us, whatever. And we will try to meet your needs where you are. And just, you know, God bless you and God bless you for these efforts. And I firmly believe that the next great awakening will be a digital one. And I think, you know, God uses the negative sometimes. He doesn't cause it. This is, you know, the result of a world of sin, but he uses it. And this could be the catalyst launches the third angel's message out with a loud voice because if we go online we can cover the world with our message yes absolutely um thomas just asked a question how will we make the resources available um if you register for this e for this webinar which you did which is why you're here we are sending a follow-up um email that's going to come to you in 24 hours that's going to have every single resource um, not every single one, but all of the resources there, um, the website you can go to, um, agencies that you can connect with, we're going to email all of that uh, to you. Uh, also, are we using a professional mic or computer mic? I do not have access to a professional mic at this moment, so it is simply my computer, my laptop, my laptop's mic and camera. And the reason why I'm staring like this is because my camera is at a weird angle. So uh, you just use what you have. 
Yes. And, and I think that's the point. You go with what you got. Now I actually do have a professional mic, but I forgot to hook it up because I'm a new mom and I had to balance getting the baby down before um, the webinar started. So I forgot to hook up the, the, the good mic. Yeah. Um, so the other, so there's a question from Roslyn. Roslyn um, asked, does the NADO general conference communication department team have any plans to deal with the growing trend of individuals, primarily young adults, preferring to attend online church services and to deal with the trend of virtual churches? That's a heavy question. Thank you for that question, Rosalind. Um, but what I think um, this deals with more so, I could be wrong. Um, this is a whole nother discussion, but one reason why a lot of people are tending to um, maybe watch church online is because they feel the relationship just isn't there. The people in the church, they don't want to deal with them. So they just want to watch the sermon and just be done with it. So I think digital evangelism is not the end. We create all these online resources so that we can get people connected physically with each other, as long as COVID is not an issue. But we also want to make sure that our churches are welcoming. Mm -hmm. It goes beyond the NAD and the general conference. And we hear it's each of our responsibility to create a warm church family. And, and that ties into this idea of a 360 community care plan, a community care strategy. So whether it's online or whether it's in person, when the churches become a safe place to land where people can be vulnerable and get their questions answered uh, in ways that are not judgmental, then the church becomes relevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with young people. And we actually have um, some resources on that as part of our digital discipleship and evangelism guide talking about when we actually meet the felt needs of our people, regardless of their age, we become relevant. Um, yes. And unfortunately, a lot of the young people are pushed away because they're dealing with things like, you know, I'm a child of the 80s. When I was a teenager in the 90s, I didn't have to deal with the things they deal with now. And so oftentimes when we respond, it almost comes from a, a place of, of judgment when we really don't understand. And so when we listen more than we speak and we find ways to provide good Christian counsel in a way that is supportive and uplifting without distancing ourselves from them, without judgment, then they feel safe. Then we become relevant to them. And then they'll come in the door. Because remember, what starts in the digital space doesn't have to stay in the digital space and vice versa. You know, using digital technologies as a way to enhance the experience so that the church is not just a building we go to for a couple right. hours a week on Sabbath. It really is a community that's alive. It should be alive and vibrant and ministering to each other's needs throughout the entire week. And, and I, I don't, I don't know when we, you say, um, you know, to deal with the growing trends, that almost sounds like it's a bad thing. I don't think it's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's just the reality. And so I think when we embrace this reality that we have a younger generation who functions with technology in a very different way than the older generations do. Like for me, technology is a tool. For younger generations, uh, technology is, it's an intimate part of their lives. Mm -hmm. It's how they live their lives is, you know, constant integration with technology. I think we need to embrace that. And I think we have to meet them where they are in their reality because they live in a world than we do. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jamie. Um, thank you. And thank you for all the questions. And Rupert, you asked for a list of Adventist digital media companies. We will definitely send that list. So if you want to improve your church's online presence, the website and so forth, we, there are companies that can help you with that. Um, any, we are going to have schedule another webinar where we can perhaps talk more specifically about uh, live streaming, just go more in depth. Um, but if you have any questions, you can just email info at centerforonlineevangelism.org. Uh, we also offer um, webs, uh, webinars uh, for churches. So for instance, if you want to get your board together or your church members together um, on Zoom, for instance, and bring one of us in to train church members how to be digital missionaries, we do that as well. So even if you miss something here, we offer the, those services. So go on our website, you can book a webinar as early as today. We would probably recommend that you do that sooner rather than later because after a time, there's only so much that we can, um, webinars that we can conduct. Um, our websites are there, sadata.org, centerforonlineevangelism.org, and send us an email 
I get that directly. Yeah, so thank you so much, everyone. Wherever you are, two things that we want you to remember, digital evangelism is making it possible to take the gospel to the end of the world. We want to go home. The other thing is God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. We, may, we will be tempted to be afraid and to give into anxiety in this moment and wonder how we're going to do it. And there's that sense of just missing how the world just normally was without this whole COVID-19 um, issue. Um, but we have our confidence is in Jesus Christ that he will protect us. He will either save you from the fire or he will walk with you through the fire. But either way, he is with you. And that's the confidence that we have. So let us be stronger together as a church working together for the coming of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much again for joining us. We will again check all the questions. I think we got everything answered. We're going to post this and you can continue the conversation through email or through our Facebook page. Thank you again to everyone. Bye. Thank you again, Jamie.